Now to take a closer look at API routes and how we can protect those, I will take this change password example. This clearly is an operation that should be restricted. Not every user should be allowed to change a password. It only makes sense for authenticated users. And hence I will add a new API route and we can add it in the API auth folder, but we could also add it somewhere else. And to show that it does not have to be in the auth folder, I will create another folder in the pages API folder, and that will be the user folder, but you could add it in auth as well. And in there, I'll add the change-password.js file because I want to create an API route which can be reached by sending a request to slash API slash user slash change password. That's reaching this file then. Now in this file, we're not going to use next auth, at least not as we did it in this square bracket next auth file. Instead, we're going to create our own API route just as we learned it in this course. So I'll create a handler function here, which gets a request and a response. And I'll then export this as a default here. And now in this handler function, we want to extract the old and new password, which the user entered here. We want to verify that the request is coming from an authenticated user and deny further action if it's not. We want to get the email address of that authenticated user then. And then we want to look into the database, see if we find that user there, see if the old password that was entered matches the current password in the database. And if that's the case, we want to replace that old password with a new password. So that's what we're now going to do over the next minutes. Now for that, in the handler function in the change password JS file here, let's first of all check if the incoming request has the right method. And for changing the password, a post or a put or a patch request makes sense. These are the three kinds of requests that imply that resources on the server should be created or changed. And you can argue whether changing a password is creating a new resource, a new password, or changing an existing resource, an existing user. And I will go for the latter argument. And I want to say that I only want to continue here if the incoming request has a method of patch. So if it's not patch, then we will just return and not continue at all. We will only continue for patch requests, which of course means that in the front end, so in our client side code, we'll have to make sure that we do send a patch request to this uh, API route later. So that's check number one. Check number two is whether that request is coming from an authenticated user or not. And if it's not, we also want to return with an error. And for this, we can again use this get session function here, which we already used on the profile page. There we are already using it in server side code instead of get server side props. So we already see that it runs on the server as well as on the client. And that of course means that we can again use it in our API route, which also is server side code. So therefore in the change password JS file, I will again import get session from next auth slash client. The slash client can be confusing, but this does work on the server as well as we saw. And then we want to check if we do get a session. For this, we can store a session in a constant and we get it by calling get session. And then as you learned on the server side, we can pass in an object where we set the rec key to the request we're getting here. Get session needs that incoming request because it will then look into that request, see if a session token cookie is part of the request. If it is, it will validate and extract that data from that cookie. And if that all then makes sense, it will give us this session object. Now get session actually returns a promise and to use async await, I'll turn this into an async function and await here. So now we get our session or we don't get one if the user is not authenticated and therefore we can check if not session 
if that's undefined, which means the request is not authenticated. And in that case, we also want to return. And here, we maybe also want to send back a response. We could send one back in this first if check as well, uh, a special response, but I don't care about that here. But here, I actually do want to send back a response with a status code of 401, which uh, basically is the standard status code for saying that authentication is missing. And then possibly some extra data attached like a message of not authenticated. But of course, it's up to you which kind of data, if any, you want to send back. So that's now another important check. And that is the key check of this module, of this course module. Because this line here, or this block of code, that's the code where we validate whether a request is authenticated or not. This is the code with which we protect our API route against unauthenticated access. And every API route that does something that should only be uh, allowed to authenticated users needs code like this. Everything else we're going to write in this API route is not directly related to authentication. Yes, we're going to change the password of a user, and that of course has something to do with authentication. But on the other hand, changing a password is really not that different from creating a product. We're just changing some data in the database in the end.